Hey everybody, this is Patrick JMT and I'm partnering with Chegg, and here we're going to start talking about modeling with differential equations. So we'll learn what we mean when we talk about differential equations, and what does it mean to be a solution of a differential equation, and we'll also look at a basic, fundamental, but very important example of a differential equation. Okay, so a differential equation is an equation that contains an unknown function, we would like to find that function if possible, and one or more of its derivatives. So here I've got an example of a differential equation. We don't know what the function y equals f of x is. I don't have a formula for it. But we're trying to find a function so that when I take its derivative, it equals x multiplied by the original function squared. That's what that differential equation says. <clears throat> In the second equation, I've got the second derivative of y minus x times y equals 2 times y prime. So you'll often talk about the order. And the order is the order of the highest derivative that occurs. So here the highest derivative I see is uh, a first derivative. So you could say this has order one. These are often called first order uh, differential equations. Notice my second one, I've got a first derivative present, but I've also got a second derivative floating around. So this would be order two. Or a second order differential equation is what they're often called. So let's look at an example here. And what does it mean to be a solution? So I've got this equation here, x times y prime equals y plus x squared times sine x. We're trying to figure out, is this function y equals negative x times cosine x minus x a solution? Well, let's just uh, work it out and see. So I can take the derivative, so y prime. You can. So the first part, I'll have to use the product rule. So if I take the derivative of negative x, that's negative 1. I'll leave the cosine x alone. We put a plus sign in there. Now I'll leave the negative x alone. The derivative of cosine of x is negative sine x. So that's going to be the derivative of the negative x cosine x part. And then the derivative of negative x is just negative 1. So let's see. If I clean this up, it looks like we get a positive x times sine x minus cosine x minus 1. So that's going to be my derivative. Well, all I need to do is just plug that derivative in, and then anywhere there's a y, I just need to plug in the function that we started off with. And we'll see if we get something equal or not. If so, then yeah, it's a solution. If not, it, it's not a solution. So on the left side, we would have x times the derivative, which we found to be x times sine x minus cosine x minus 1. On the right side, we're left with y, which is negative x times cosine x minus x, that's just the original function before we took the derivative, plus x squared times sine x. So let's see, do we get something even equal? So on the left side, we have x squared times sine x, I'm just distributing the x here, minus x times cosine x minus x. Does that equal what's on the right side? I think it looks like we might, we might have a winner here. So I've got my positive x squared sine x, positive x squared sine x. I've got my negative x cosine x, negative x cosine x. And I've got my negative x. So yes, it looks like, in fact, uh, this is a solution. So ultimately, again, what we'll want to do is we'll want to be able to go from these differential equations to finding these solutions. And depending on the type of differential equation you have, there's just a myriad of different techniques. So let's look at one other thing here. So uh, this is a very uh, important and popular model to uh, model population growth. This is what's known as the logistic model. But for now, you can just think about it in terms of a differential equation, right? It says the change in population with respect to time, or p prime, that equals 1.4 times whatever the population is at that moment multiplied by the quantity 1 minus p divided by 4,800. So in this case, I don't know what the population model is. So the population at time t, I don't know a formula for that. Technically, I'm lying because I do know a formula for it. You'll end up finding a solution for this type of equation. But for now, even if you didn't know what this, what this model is, that's okay. We can still get information just from this differential equation. So it says, for what values of p is the population increasing? Well, I mean, intuitively, right, the population is either 0 or the population is some positive number. OK, so for the population to be increasing, I know that the population would have to be greater than 0. 
And, okay, so assuming the population's greater than zero, 1.4 times the population, that's gonna be a positive number. Well, this quantity, one minus the population divided uh, by, excuse me, one minus the population divided by 4,800, <clears throat> now that could be positive or negative depending on the value of p. So we would want one minus p over 4,800, we would want that to be some positive number. But for that to be positive, it looks like the population would have to be less than 4,800, right? If P goes over, if it's 4,800 or larger, if it equals 4,800, right, this quantity is going to be zero, and then the population, the change in population is equal to zero. If the population is larger than 4,800, notice this value is going to be larger than one, and this will become negative. So again, equivalently, if you just solve this inequality, you'll get that uh, P has to be less than 4,800. So that's when the population is increasing. When, for what values of P is the population decreasing? Well, that's if the population is greater than 4,800. If the population is greater than 4,800, well, P over 4,800 will be larger than 1, which means 1 minus that, we're going to get some negative number. And again, the population is already positive, so the change in population is going to be negative, and that means that the population is decreasing. So again, I don't know the population model, right? But I'm getting information just by thinking about my, my differential equation. And the last one, it says, what are the equilibrium solutions? So when would the change in population with respect to time equal zero? When is there no change in population? Well, I think we can figure that out pretty easily. So we want the change in population to equal zero. Well, intuitively, I think there's a couple different ways to think about it. One, you could just take your equation and set it equal to zero, your differential equation. Well, that means 1.4p would have to equal zero, or when p equals zero, right? If there's no population, there's going to be no change. So that's kind of the boring solution, but it's valid. And we would have to have 1 minus p over 4,800 to equal zero. Well, you can solve that. That's when the population exactly equals 4,800. It's going to turn out this population of 4,800 is, is um, it has a special meaning. It's called the carrying capacity. So the idea is this differential equation is modeling some environment where the, the environment can at most hold 4,800 uh, uh, objects, creatures, bacteria, people, whatever. That's the carrying capacity. Once you go over that limit, that 4,800, we said that's when the population, the change in population starts becoming negative. Or you can think, you know, more things are dying than are, are uh, being born, for example. There's a, there's a negative net change in the population. So, okay, just a little introduction here to differential equations. What is a differential equation? What is the order? What does it mean to be a solution? And again, just uh, how you can interpret these, these differential equations. Again, to get information, even if you don't actually know the, the model the, or the, the unknown function.